Magi alert. Attention. Magi alert. New discovery in the heavens. Father authenticating and signifying the importance of the great sign of Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Wow. What exciting news this is, as I've been sharing this with my fellow Magi. They have been so excited and have been encouraging me to do this extra YouTube. We've done two YouTubes relative to the celestial significance of things happening around us. Our first one that we posted on the eclipse, the solar eclipse of August 21st, 2017, was a big hit. And we've recently posted one on the probability of the significance of Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 and September the 23rd of this coming year. We're continually hearing about information that's coming in about this great sign and it does say that in Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 and, and a great sign appeared in heaven and so God the Father, the architect uh, and the originator of the celestial word of God and, and we call it the God clock so program the alarms to go off in the heavens at this time that we can't miss this if you're listening and if you're watching. And you know, when Yeshua came first time and there was great celestial announcements, still people did not pay attention and heed the warning or the announcements. And so I'm saying to you this time, wake up and pay attention. The Lord is coming. So there's been quite a bit of hoopla about the retrograde of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo for nine months that precipitates the fulfillment of the aligning of the 12 stars in the head of Virgo as Revelation 12, 1 and 2 shows. However, what I want to share with you is that while Jupiter now has been retrograding in the womb of Virgo, now we find a dual retrograde of Mercury as it's been retrograding around the magnanimous and fantastic star of Regulus. Let me stop for a second and tell you that we'll be sipping through a fire hose here. And so I have written this information in a blog and I posted this on my blog, which is drdaleblog.blogspot.com. So go to it and read it. There's good information, maybe even some more background than what I'll be able to cover today, but this is exciting and great news because not only is there a dual retrograde going on at this time, but the significance of where it is in the heavens is what I want to talk to you about to begin with. So there are four things that I want to talk to you about specifically in this YouTube. I want to talk to you about the Alpha and the Omega sign in the heavens being fulfilled. I want to talk to you about the dual retrograde of Jupiter and Mercury. I want to talk to you about the simultaneous conjunction of Spica and Jupiter and Mercury and Regulus simultaneously two weeks before the 23rd of September. I want to talk to you about the intricacies of Mercury's retrograde and the message that it's announcing. And finally, I want to show you about dancing with Regulus. Regulus has six major conjunctions in it within a two-month period, which included drawing a circle. Mercury drew a circle around Regulus while the great solar eclipse of the USA took place on August 21st. Amazing. There's no way that God wants us to miss this sign. So first, Alpha and the Omega. Look at this chart that I have put up here for you. This has the heavens divided by this green line. And the green line, one side is the Alpha and the other side is the Omega. And this is how you read the celestial scriptures that God ordained and gave to the patriarchs of old, which we've been able to reassemble and construct the message. Obviously, the message of the heavens is about the Messiah, and this is the whole code, key code that unlocks the heavens. Having said that, Alpha is the beginning of the constellational circle that the sun draws, and it obviously is in Virgo. As Isaiah 7, 14 said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, which shall call his name Emmanuel, right? So we start in Virgo, and the circle goes all the way around through the zodiac or the Masroth and culminates in Leo, which is the right-hand side of the chart. 
and that's the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega. So we're talking about another revelation of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMashiach, of Yeshua Ben Yahweh, the Son of the Living God, as he has now, it is, it is now walking in the personification and fulfillment of being the Alpha and the Omega. Revelation 1.8 says, Behold, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. He is being fulfilled in the Alpha and the Omega. These huge signs that are taking place in the heavens are taking place at the intersection, at the intersection of Virgo and Leo at the beginning and the ending of the Maseroth. You know, the more I study the celestial word of God, the more I realize that Jesus Christ himself proclaimed to whenever he said, I am the light of the world, he proclaimed personification with the Son. He is the Ram of God. He is the Lamb of God. He's the light of the tribe of Judah. He's the, the lawgiver that we'll see later on as, as being fulfilled in this particular celestial array. But this particular chart that we have here is showing the Alpha and the Omega. The Alpha being Virgo and the Omega being Leo is where these signs are taking place. Now, having said that, look again at your chart and notice that in the Alpha side of the chart that there is a loop that is drawn. That is a retrograde motion portrayal of the planet Jupiter that's been taking place over on almost a, a year-long period this loop would show. On the right hand side we see the loop that is made by Mercury and this is also a retrograde. Now a couple of things here and I can't tell you everything I need to right here but the circle goes Virgo, the, the promised seed, Libra, the price to be paid, Scorpio, he was willing to be wounded, Sagittarius, he's coming back to gather us together, okay? Capricorn, he was the sacrifice, Aquarius, he poured out the blessing of the Holy Spirit, Pisces, to bind the devil, Aries, so we could reign with him on earth, and to complete the Maseroth, or the Zodiac, Taurus is he's coming with the determination of a bull. Gemini shows the bride and bridegroom to get his bridegroom. It shows the inheritance that he has for believers in him. And Leo then finally is the Omega, the constellation that ends the story. Alpha, Virgo, Omega, Leo. Now, amazing. And so these two planets, Jupiter and Mercury, are right now retrograding in these particular positions and will culminate their retrograde. This is fantastic. They will culminate their retrogrades on the 9th of September. The dating this, this is only a few days away and so we're going to hot foot this into production so that you can see the timeliness of this. This is an amazing reality. The termination of the retrogrades, both Mercury and Jupiter's retrograde, will be on the 9th of September, 14 days, two weeks before the great sign of Revelation 12 verses 1 and 2 will be fulfilled. Isn't that amazing? A dual retrograde. Hurrah. You know, one takes a year, the other takes a month. I mean, how could God plan this? And to understand a retrograde is, is a good lesson, but it's, it's an optical illusion when a faster moving object passes by a slower moving one, and when you look at the slower moving one, the background behind it, it appears that it's going backwards as the faster one overtakes it. In the heavens, this is one of the great, great secrets that Magi use to interpret the heavens. Actually, we're going to see the star Regulus here in a little bit. In the constellation of Leo, Jupiter retrograded around Regulus at the coming of Yeshua's first coming and announce his coming three times that the king is coming, the king is coming, the king is coming, and the king star, the king is coming, the king is coming, the king is coming in the constellation of Leo, the king is coming. Do you get it? The king is coming. And one more time, nine times it said it, the king is coming. And this is what's happening in the heavens now. We have the retrograde of Jupiter around Spica, and we have the retrograde of Mercury around Regulus. They both terminate on September 9th. Now watch this very closely. Here's another chart that I want you to see. You will notice that on the 9th of September, the direction between Spica, or Asimach as the Hebrew word is, between Spica and Jupiter is pointed directly due north. Likewise, in the constellation of Leo, Mercury and Regulus are aligned in perfect due north. 
The perfect alignment of planets and stars in the plane toward the North Pole is called a conjunction. Sort of like an intersection that you would in traffic, but you have a conjunction in the heavens. Not where they flow at cross purposes, but where they flow together. Both Jupiter and Spica are in conjunction, and Mercury and Regulus are in conjunction on September the 9th. Not only, so here we go, drum roll, not only do we have a dual retrograde, but we have a simultaneous conjunction on that day, on that day. Mm. Incredibly amazing. It really, really is. One of the YouTubes I did on this, I, I figured the uh, probability of this being <laughs> random is uh, 1 in 19.25 quadrillion. Uh, the, the possibility, the probability that there is something significant about this is 19.25 quadrillion to 1. When we add this celestial display to it, the numbers of probability is incomprehensible. But wait, I'm not done yet because I want to show you what the heavens are saying. Now, astronomers may could even tell you that this was happening. Doubt it. They're not looking for the truths of the Messiah in the heavens. But anyhow, they could tell you that Mercury was retrograding, has been retrograding around Regulus. They could have told you this. They could have told you that Regulus was in direct conjunctional line with the sun, the moon, and the earth on the solar eclipse. But they're not looking for that. They're not looking for the Messiah. I'm not concerned about what they're not seeing. I'm concerned about what we are seeing. The heavens are the Word of God. And I know that that's a, an amazing statement just to make in, in a wholesale shot to you here, but it's all interpretable when you see the keys that God hid in His Word for us to be able to recover these truths in the end times. Each of the planets describes a particular aspect of the Messiah. Mercury describes the message he speaks. Venus describes his passion. Mars describes his fervor and what he'll fight for. Jupiter, his king, leadership, and Saturn, his service. Mercury and Jupiter, actually, it's very funny that in Acts 14, 12, both these planets are named and their characteristics are given out of mythology, but even the mythological characteristics hold true to what these planets mean. Barnabas was called Jupiter and Paul was called Mercurius. Barnabas because he was the leader and Paul Mercurius because he was the spokesman. This is exactly what these planets are saying. Jupiter is the king planet. No argument. It was the one that was retrograding around Regulus at Christ at Jesus of Nazareth's birth on September the 11th in 3 BC. Mercury is the messenger. It's the Hebrew word kova chama and it means the sun's messenger. It's companion the one that travels with the sun and makes known the message. So in this sense, if you can uh, allow me to extend this relationship, Jupiter in a comparison metaphorically be the king, Jesus Christ, and Mercury, the announcer, could be represented as John the Baptist, saying, prepare ye the way for the coming of the king. And this is what this is saying. It's saying in such bold, bold detail, it's hard for me to describe. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the retrogrades of Mercury. And a retrograde of Mercury is not unusual, uh, actually. Mercury retrogrades uh, a lot. And so um, as it travels around the sun once every 88 days, we do see those. But the fact that Mercury is retrograding around Regulus at this time, the same time that Jupiter is retrograding around Spica, they are retrograding around the Alpha Star. Not only is Virgo the Alpha constellation, but Spica or Alcimach is the Alpha Star, and Mercury is retrograding around Regulus, the Omega, the Omega constellation, and the Omega Star of Regulus simultaneously. This is just this is like this is like the the fireworks culmination on the 4th of July, without a doubt. Mercury, as it's done its retrograde around in the constellation of Leo and past the star Regulus, Mercury conjuncts with Regulus three times. 
on July 25th, on August 14th, and on September, September 4th, and, and September 9th. These three conjunctions, every time Mercury conjuncts with Regulus, it makes a statement. Mercury is the messenger. Now what Regulus says is what is very, very important to us. But we'll get to that in just a moment. But Mercury also goes into conjunction with Mars on the 16th of September and then is in perfect fulfillment alignment for the great sign on September 23rd. So, but Mercury is the messenger. It's proclaiming a message. And now I want to talk to you about the star Regulus. And Regulus has got some of the deepest, deeper meanings of any star in the entire planisphere of the heavens. Regulus, and you can see on this chart, on any of them, that Regulus is located directly between the feet of Leo, the lion, and it's the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of beasts, the culminating constellation, the omega of the heavens, and here's what this sign is telling us when Mercury is retrograding around Regulus. Regulus has six major conjunctions and celestial fulfillments in less than two months. Now listen to me. Regulus in the Latin means regal or king. So it says the king is coming. The king is coming. It no doubt has that meaning. However, in the Hebrew, it means this the word regel, R-E-G-E-L, and it means the one who tramples underfoot. Now pay close attention. The dual meaning of Regulus here is going to summarize the message that the whole Revelation 23 is talking about. Here's the dual meaning. The king is coming and he will cast down Satan. Now the trampling underfoot, if you again look at this chart, you'll see underneath the feet of Leo is Hydra, the great serpent, which also Many people believe that it extends one-third of the distance around the, the planisphere. No coincidence here that, that this is talking about Leo pouncing on the head of Hydra. And this is the ultimate reprisal against your enemy. When you see the lion attacking a snake, uh, it jumps on its head, it rips its head from its body, and then it begins to rend the flesh, and then finally, as the, the Deccans and Leo tells it, finally eats the snake. The final ultimate reprisal of your enemy is to eat him after you emaciate and, and kill him and destroy his body, you eat his flesh. This is the vindication that Christ has in casting down Satan. And you need to pay attention because the one that we're accustomed to seeing with the shepherd's crook, you know, that's always going, you know, whatever in the little symbolism of esoteric lies, this Messiah now is coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He will not be taken for granted this time. Now, so as Mercury has gone through and retrograded three times around Regulus, this is what it says because of the meanings of Regulus. I'm not through yet. Regulus means the king. He also means the one trampled underfoot. And yet, in Genesis 49.10, Regulus is referred to as the star between the feet of Leo and is called the law giver. So here's what I want to share with you. The first time Mercury went through and passed Regulus, it said the king is coming. It went through again, it said the king is coming. It's going to give us a ninefold announcement. Mercury is the announcer. He's the herald. He goes before and announces the coming like John the Baptist did, Mercury is doing this for Jupiter, which is happening in the complementary constellation just next door. Mercury says the king is coming. He says again on September 4th, the king is coming. And then on September 9th, when it conjuncts and all is within two degrees of Regulus in the heavens, it says the king is coming. And yet in the other definition of Regulus, it says, the king is coming to tear down Satan's kingdom. This is what Revelation 12, 3 and 4 is talking about. And it says again, the king is coming to rend his flesh. And then it says the king is coming 
to totally consume and devour the evil of Satan. Wow. Now the lawgiver from Genesis 49.10 is another meaning. Now when Christ came the first time and Jupiter retrograded around Regulus three times, it said the king is coming, the king is coming, the king is coming. It also said a new lawgiver is here. And in the first coming of Christ, he brought the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This time, the king is coming to annihilate and cast down Satan. Here it is. There's a new sheriff coming to town. And I am so excited to see him wreak havoc on the bad guys that's been spoiling our parties. I can only imagine how Marshall Dillon from Gunsmoke can identify with Jesus' return to the heaven. He's not going to allow rebellion to reign in his kingdom. There's a new sheriff coming to town. You know, we've seen this happen with President Trump. He's a new sheriff that's come to town. But President Trump hasn't had the firepower to back up his calling and his claims. Yeshua ben Yahweh will come with a company of angels and with his bride, and they will enforce the kingdom of God on this earth with a rod of iron and with a sword. This is what I'm excited about. So it says, there's a new sheriff in town. There's a new law coming. Rebellion will not be tolerated any longer. This is what Regulus and Mercury is saying to the world. I'm excited. I want to see Babylon fall. Babylon, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. Rejoice, O you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. The world needs to feel the fury and wrath of God. And I'll tell you, there is nothing that will make people repent like fear. So, sort of in summary, when you look at the left-hand side or the, the alpha side of this chart, that is the fulfillment of Revelation 12, 1 and 2. The right-hand side of Omega is the fulfillment of Revelation 3 and 4. Now, in my blog, I put a summary. I want to do this summary for you too. Men and brethren, what shall we do? That was Acts 2, 37. Well, first of all, we should realize that Jupiter coming out of this birth canal and out of the womb of Virgo at this particular time could possibly and quite probably is the fulfillment of what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 8, that this is the beginning of birth pangs. I believe succinctly that this is the beginning of the Great Tribulation. We are already in Great Tribulation, especially in the United States. And so, men and brethren, what shall we do? The message that Mercury is heralding is repent. That's what John the Baptist and Jesus Christ said consistently, three times actually, when you read about it in the Bible. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We are not going to stop this from happening. A nuclear bomb that blows up the world will not stop this alignment from happening. We can't change it. God has ordained it. And he gave it to John in a prophetic picture that John wrote 2,000 years ago. And it's been written in the heavens. So when we see God moving, we don't ask God to change. We, see, we say, what can we do to change to meet him? Like Lot getting out of Sodom and Gomorrah. The thing that you and I need to do is we need to repent and come apart from the things of this world. You know, repentance is, a, is not a fashionable word in most Christian circles. But you know what repent means? It means simply to give up to Jesus what you don't want him to have. That's all it means. He's still a jealous God, and he's looking for people to reign with him that are amenable to his rulership and love obedience and love discipline. So what can we do? We can repent. And you know what? I believe that the world is going to fall on its knees when it sees the wrath of God being poured out in this world. I don't know. There is a possibility that the bride of Christ may be taken off of the earth during these fall feast days. There is a very strong possibility. But I want to tell you, the rest of Revelation chapter 12 and 13 and 14 assures us that there will be believers in Jesus Christ left during the tribulation. So. If, in fact, we are at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, the one and only thing you can really do is make sure you're in good standing with the judge. And he is coming. It's really true. He is coming. Let me summarize to you the significance of the whole thing. Revelation 12, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 1 and 2 talks about the fulfillment 
of the sun of the woman, the moon under her feet, on her head, 12 stars, that's the three planets plus the nine stars of Leo. And she being child, uh, being with child, travailed, travailed in pain and to be delivered. That's Jupiter in the womb of Virgo for nine months. Verses 3 and 4 talks about in Revelation chapter 12, another great sign in the heavens, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns. His tail drawing a third of the part of the stars to the earth and to cast them down. He stood before the woman to devour the child for when the child was ready to be delivered. These two events are mutually inclusive. They have to occur at the same time. And so if that being the case then, we're seeing the fulfillment of the trampling of Satan fulfilled in Leo, in Leo's side, in the Omega side of, this, of these portrayals. These are bookends. These dual constellations, the dual retrogrades, the simultaneous conjunctions, the message of, of Mercury announcing the king is coming, Satan is thrown down, there's a new sheriff coming in town, and yet I haven't told you yet that while Mercury was retrograding in, in, in Leo around Regulus is when the August 21st eclipse occurred. And the whole world was looking at it and didn't see it. And Mercury was drawing the circle right around Regulus and it was saying the king is coming. I was privileged to see the solar eclipse in its totality. And whenever the, the moon completely covered the surface of the sun, interesting, the sun's 400 times larger than the moon, the moon's 400 times closer than the sun. And they call this uh, coincidental astronomy. I call it the hand of God in creation. But when, that, when the moon blocked out the sun, it looked like somebody had blown a hole in the sky. And you could see Venus. Specifically, you should have been able to see Regulus and particularly maybe even see Mercury, but Mercury was drawing a circle around this. Drawing a circle around this. My daughter Elizabeth years ago, I asked her how did she think it would be important if Mars was drawing a circle in the sky. She said, oh my Lord, yes Dad. What's it drawing a circle around? What was Mercury drawing the circle around? Mercury was drawing the circle around the star Regulus, the constellation of Omega, the Omega star. This says the king is coming. The king is coming. He will trample Satan, and he's bringing a new law to town. I'm looking forward to the coming of the king. I'm looking forward to the fulfilling of the marriage supper of the Lamb and the casting down of evil. And for the people of this world, to see exactly what's really going on. Hey, this X of the solar eclipses that comes across the United States is marking the deep state of Babylon in the United States. They will be judged, and it goes back a lot farther than just a past couple of decades. This is stuff has gone on esoterically in our nation. The Babylon in America will be destroyed. Make sure that you're on the right side with the judge. This is not the guy that's coming that's going to be the shepherd to tend to your wounds. This is the king that's coming that's going to make wounds and he's going to separate and sort the good from the evil. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming to trample Satan. There's a new sheriff in town and his name is Yeshua ben Yahweh, Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, the elect of God. He's coming. Thank you.